Hey, welcome to another edition of BearAmerica.tv, a very special edition, I might add. Here we are at the first ever North Texas uh, Beer Festival. And so there's lots of good breweries here, right? And uh, so I have Cam here from Franconia. Yes, sir. Talk a little bit about Franconia, where you guys are located. Uh, we are located in McKinney, Texas, which is just a 15-minute drive straight up the highway from here where we are in Plano. Just north um, of Dallas? For, yeah, just north of Dallas. Uh, we're, we're kind of the main Dallas brewery. There's, we're, we're, we're getting more beers and more breweries around in the area, but for now, uh, we're, we're the Dallas brewery in the area. Um, we've been open for about three years now. March of 08 is when we put out our Youngins. first batch of beer. Yeah, yeah we're, the, we're the new guys to the scene in the, so in can the I North just stop Texas you right area. There? Yeah. It's amazing to me that you guys right now are the main brewery just north of Dallas, Texas, and you're three years old. Like, it's Dallas, Texas. Well, um, you know what I mean? Texas is like, you know, Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and one of the things that my, 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 my brewmaster likes to talk about is he's from Germany. He's been here for about eight years, and where he's from, the, the region that he's from, there's 12 million people and 380 breweries. In all of North Texas, there's about 7 million people and two breweries. So he moved here and realized that this is where he needed to open a brewery. We were, we were in need of beer in the North Texas area. And as you can kind of see from today, the beer culture here really has started to explode. I mean, we, we see it every week in, in, at our brewery, sending more kegs out the door and more people coming in for our tours every week telling us, you know, they've had our beer there, they've had our beer there. They didn't, they didn't know that beer could be what it is. And, the, the culture here is it's starting to get a lot better. It's starting to move away from the from the Bud Miller Coors, the light beer crowd, and starting to get more into the craft beer scene. So there there is a reason why they call the South the final frontier of craft brewing. <laughs> <laughs> and I can relate, being from Georgia, we have some of the same problems. Mm -hmm. uh, Georgia may be slightly ahead of the curve on that, but uh, yeah. we, we have some of the same issues. Um, on the legal, the regulating. Yeah, uh, we've got we've got a few bills that are we're trying to get to go through the house right now. That it's just every every time that the legislation comes up, it's another it's a battle to try to try to get things to work out in our favor. Well, I'm glad you went there. I was kind of hoping we would talk a little bit about this. How how would the uh, the bill that's in that's on the table in the Texas legislature affect what you guys do? Well, what what we're trying to do right now is unfortunately we have to go through a middleman. We're not allowed to give our beer to people. People can come up to the people come up to the brewery all the time and would love to Wanna walk out of there. Yeah, yeah, they're like, can I can I buy a bottle of beer? Can I buy a keg of beer? And no, not even sorry. A growler, right? Yeah, not no, even. we can't fill growlers. All we can do is we, we kind of can have a little work around. We can offer a tour and then give away beer every week on the tour. Um, it's Unfortunately, it's not the easiest way to, to get, our, get our name out. Um, breweries in California and Colorado, you'll walk into a brewery there and there'll be, a, there'll be a tasting room in the front of the bar and they'll have regulars that come in and drink their beer all the time. And we can't do that. Um, so it, it, it makes it a lot harder to get off the ground, which is probably one of the main reasons that there's not more breweries in the area than there are now. You're, you're singing a familiar song to me. Uh, <laughs> we, we ran into some of that in the Georgia legislature this year. We, we, Georgia apparently has similar laws to, yeah. to Texas, but um, yeah, and, and on top of uh, what you were just saying about California, they can even distribute. Yeah. They can be distributors, brewers, luckily, and sell on site. So luckily that does help us out a little bit because we are, we, we, we distribute all of our own beer. Um, there's a couple of the oh. Austin breweries that do distribute their own beer also. Well, that's so interesting. So luckily we can we can get into the customers if anything happens, you know, we're, we're a phone call away and the brewmaster or the head brewer or somebody's going to be running down and take care of the problem. Um, so luckily we can do that. So I'm sure that's actually kind of a curse and a blessing. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, 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 it's been both. It's, and there's, you know, there's also the, the big beer distributor guys here that, that love to get in our way every, every chance that they get. So, uh, but... It's, it's, it's helped us out being able to distribute our own beer a lot. And luckily, we, we've, we've had that opportunity. And the, the fact is, is that chances are, once you get to a certain level, you'll probably pick a major wholesaler just because it becomes too problematic yeah. to continue to do that on any large scale. I mean, Texas is a huge state. Right now, the every, the every other week, we're, uh, we're making a six-hour round trip down to Austin and the nine-hour round trip down to Houston. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's a lot of driving for us for our one our one delivery guy that gets to make the trip every other week. So. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but it's 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 helped us out again a lot. It's instead of having to go through it, another guy to get our beer out there. Well, let's turn the uh, conversation towards the, the the type of your beers. You mentioned you have a German brewmaster. Uh, yeah. We have tasted uh, uh, a number of your beers here at the festival. Uh, all very the German, German mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. So you brought the Maybach? Uh, today, actually, we have our, our Maybach, which is our current seasonal that we have out. Uh, then we have our Kolsch, our Hefeweizen, and our Dunkel. 
Um, and then uh, our other main beer that we have out, we have four year-round beers, and the lager would be our fourth year-round beer that we didn't bring out here with us today. Um, but all of our beers that we do, all of our other seasonals, our next season will be a Crystal Weizen that we do. Ah. And all of our beers are traditional German beers, all brewed uh, to the German purity law, um, just using the four, the hops, barley, water, yeast, um, traditional German brewing techniques. Uh, Dennis has been here for about eight years now. Um, he brewed his first batch of beer when he was 12 at his uncle's brewery in, uh, in Munich. So wow. he, he's been doing it for a while. His uh, great-great-grandfather is actually uh, the guy that's in our logo. Um, Very cool. Uh, uh, it's on the back of my shirt there. But yeah, it's uh, his great-great-grandfather holding some of the wooden kegs that we have out here with us today. So it's uh, his mother's a brewery lab technician. Um, his his uh, we, don't, we don't like to spread it out too much, but you you've heard of his uncle's breweries in Germany, yeah. and it's uh, it, it's in his blood. Mm -hmm. And so he moved over here, found the right spot to start doing it, and luckily I was in the right place at the right time. And right on. Was, well, that's a point to, of pride. Was able to jump in there with yeah. him. So I yeah, yeah I uh, started brewing pretty much as soon as I was legally able to start brewing. I <laughs> uh, went to school for it after my wife saw how much money I was spending on brewing at home. Um, went to school for it at uh, at Siebel, which happens to be the sister school the school go. that he went to in yeah. Germany, and, and he went to uh, Siebel. I'm a Siebel graduate. Graduate. Yeah, and so uh, you know, I, the week after I finished my course, I walked up to Franconia, walked in the door, and asked them if I could scrape Hire out their me. mash tuns. And uh, yeah, six months later, I did get hired. I, I cleaned the floors for six months for free, and. <laughs> Now well, I paid off. finally worked my way up, yeah. and now now I'm making the beer for him. So I do want to mention that um, the the Maybach is being poured out of one of those traditional casks that you mentioned. Yep. These are German casks that came from the brewery that your brewmaster yep, they are, came uh, from. They are 200 year old wooden kegs. Uh, our brewmaster and the and the mayor hammered a tap into one of them out there about an hour ago. That's, and now we're uh, now oh, we're serving it over cool. here at our table. Yeah, so. You don't really see wonderful. that every day. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of this yeah, it's, beer. It's, it, it's a lot of fun to, to do that with a, because we'll, we'll take the wooden keg out occasionally, especially for our Oktoberfest. It's a big thing that we'll do. And it, it's a lot of fun, especially having people like the mayor do it. All right, all right, here, mayor, here's your here's your hammer. Snack it in there. And get ready to get wet. over the place. <laughs> right. and, no, but it's a lot of fun, and it, it, it gets the crowd excited, too. Well, very cool. Wonderful. Well, Cam, thanks, well, thanks for, for taking, uh, the time. taking the time. Yeah, yeah, not a problem. It's Franconia guys. in uh, in Texas, uh, just north of Dallas, in McKinney, Texas. And yep. uh, check it out if you're ever in the area. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, cheers. cheers. Oh, I don't even have a beer in my hand. Yeah, What's thanks. Like that? Yeah, nice. <laughs> Here it is. Yeah, there we go. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.